Okay, the next thing that we want to do is be able to use reference triangles. We've used them a little bit before, but this style problem is going to be a little bit different. It's going to end up being something that overlaps with what we learned about the phrase, all students take calculus. Let's get started. Find the five other trig functions of theta using reference triangles. Basically, in general, these are the steps. So we're going to, to use a reference triangle. We're going to need to draw one first. We'll label the sides and find the missing side, usually using the Pythagorean theorem or Pythagorean triples. And then we can use Sokotoa to finish the problem. Let's begin. Theta is in quadrant number one. And what I want to do here first, before we go any further, is give you some very good information about reference triangles that's going to save you time. When we have reference triangles, basically, if it's in quadrant number one, the reference triangle, it's going to look like this. If it's in quadrant number two, it's going to look like this. If it's in quadrant number three, it's going to look like this. And in quadrant number four, it's going to look like that. And all four of these triangles together basically form what looks like a bow tie. And so you're going to want to keep this idea in mind. Because our problem up here says quadrant number one, we're going to use this triangle that's in quadrant number one right there. So let's go ahead and draw that triangle in on our diagram. There we go. Now, where's the angle theta? The angle theta is right there. They tell us that cosine of theta is 4 fifths. And so now that we've got the triangle drawn, let's go to step two and label the sides and find the missing side. Because this is cosine, we know from Sokotoa this comes from cosine equals adjacent leg over hypotenuse. The top is our adjacent leg. The bottom right here is our hypotenuse. So let's label these. Here's theta, adjacent leg is four, hypotenuse is five. To find the third side of the triangle, we can label that x, and we could use triples or our Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus four squared equals five squared. And if we solve for x, we're gonna get x is equal to three. And so let's go ahead and label that to be three. Now the final step in our problem is to use Sokotoa to find the values of the other trig functions. We already know what cosine is right here. And so let's get the other trig functions. Let's start with secant because that's the cousin of cosine. And we know to get secant, we can just take cosine and take the reciprocal 5 fourths. Next part. To get our other trig functions, we can just use our reference triangle here. We know that sine is going to end up, according to Sokotoa, being opposite over hypotenuse, so 3 fifths. The cousin, cosecant, is going to be the reciprocal 5 thirds. And then tangent. Tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, so opposite 3, adjacent 4, 3 fourths. Cotangent is going to be the reciprocal 4 thirds. So basically, that's what we do in these kinds of problems. I want you to go ahead and try this next problem below on your own. So pause the video, try it, then we'll go through that. Okay, let's take a look at this next problem. Here they tell us theta is in quadrant one, so let's draw again a quadrant one triangle right up here. We can see it looks like that. Now let's go ahead and label the sides. This time this is sine. According to Sokotoa, we know that sine is going to be an opposite leg over hypotenuse. So opposite our theta, we're going to have five. Hypotenuse is going to be 13. And now we want to figure out the third side of the triangle. Whoops, sorry about that. Third side of the triangle, which is x. Our Pythagorean theorem gives us x squared plus 5 squared equals 13 squared. And when we solve it the regular way, we're going to end up getting x is equal to 12. So let's go ahead and label this as 12. 
and now we can get our remaining trig functions. They gave us sine, the cousin cosecant is going to be 13 over 5, and we get that by taking the reciprocal. Now we can get the cosine, and the cosine looking at our triangle is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 12 over 13. So the secant, the reciprocal of our cosine is going to be 13 over 12. The tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, so 5 over 12. And the cotangent is going to end up being the reciprocal of the tangent 12 over 5. Hopefully that went well for you. If it did, give yourself a gentle imaginary pat on the shoulder. Let's take a look at the back side of this sheet. We've got some tougher problems on the back side. What makes this problem harder is the angle and the fact that some of our trig functions will end up being negative. Let's see how this works. They tell us theta is in quadrant four, so let's draw a quadrant four reference triangle. And our angle theta, of course, is this angle right there. But anytime we're dealing with a reference triangle, we just focus on the reference angle right here. We'll call that theta prime, the reference angle. We've learned about reference angles before. Now, because this is tangent, we can go ahead and label our triangle as having a negative five for opposite and a 12 for adjacent. So opposite is gonna be negative five, and adjacent is gonna be 12. If we use our Pythagorean theorem to figure out the third side x, we can say that negative five squared plus 12 squared equals x squared. And doing our math, we're gonna get x equals 13. And now that we've got that, we can finish up our problem. So we've got here tangent is going to be negative 5 over 12. Cotangent needs to be the reciprocal, which is negative 12 fifths. We also know that our sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so negative 5 over 13. Flip it, giving us our cosecant is going to end up being negative 13 fifths. And then finally, our cosine is going to end up being 12 over 13, making our secant into 13 over 12. All right, uh, let's take a look at the next problem here and go through that carefully. So we have theta in quadrant number three this time. Let's go ahead and draw a reference triangle in quadrant three. Here is our angle theta. And we use theta prime, that reference angle there, for theta to figure out our trig values. As we look here at sine, so we know this is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is going to be negative three hypotenuse is going to be 4, and be careful on this, we need to figure out x. So let's use our Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared is c squared. x squared plus negative 3 squared equals 4 squared. And if we solve this, we're going to end up finding something very interesting. We're going to get x squared is equal to 7 and then we get x is equal to plus or minus square root of 7. Notice here I included the plus and the minus. reason I included the plus and the minus is that, oops, sorry about that, this x right here being right on top of the negative x values will have a negative square root of 7 as the value in the reference triangle. So we need to use negative, and because this is, boy, that does not look good. Let me put the negative up there to make it very clear. Negative square root of seven. So we got sine here, 
being negative 3 over 4, our cosine is going to end up being adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative square root of 7 over 4. Our tangent is going to end up being opposite over adjacent, which is negative 3 over negative square root of 7. However, these divide to give us a positive, and we'll leave it as 3 over square root of 7. Now, I think you can get secant, cosecant, and cotangent on your own. The last thing. What I want to do in this last problem is give you a, an alternative to this part with the signs here using all students take calculus. Let's take a look at our final problem. Here, if we do just what we did before, we're going to end up getting our reference triangle, this time in quadrant number two. So we'll draw it in here. Here's our angle theta. This angle right here is our reference angle theta prime, and we use that for theta. And here they tell us cosine is one-third. And so this will be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is going to be one and hypotenuse is 3. Already I can tell you that there's a little problem with this one. It should be a negative one-third. So fix that on your sheet. This should be a negative one. Now, let's go ahead and figure out the third side of the triangle. If we do our Pythagorean theorem, we can say a squared plus b squared is c squared. So x squared plus negative 1 squared equals 3 squared. And when we solve it, we're going to end up getting x is equal to plus or minus square root of 8. Now here's the alternative method that I want to give you. The alternative method goes like this. You can ignore the signs and make these all positive. And you can go ahead and use that to finish up the problem, but to get the signs of all the trig functions, you want to use all students take calculus. Let's look at an example. We know cosine is negative one-third, and we can get secant to be the reciprocal, which is negative three over one, which is negative three. Let's do sine. Well, our sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, isn't it? So that'll be square root of eight over three. But is sine positive or negative in this quadrant? If you think about all students take calculus, this is students, which is sine. Sine is positive. That'll be positive. Let's try cosine. Well, wait, we already have cosine. So let's try the reciprocal of sine, which is going to be cosecant. Cosecant is going to be 3 over square root of 8, and we'll leave it like that. 3 over square root of 8. What about the tangent? If we try tangent, we can do opposite over adjacent, which is square root of 8 over 1, which is square root of 8. And what's the tangent going to be in the second quadrant? Well, tangent is negative, so this will be a negative. Why is tangent negative? Because all students take calculus. In the second quadrant, only sine and cosecant are positive, meaning tangent's got to be negative. Cotangent is going to be negative 1 over square root of 8. And we're done.